You can't stay in your corner of the forest waiting for others to come to you. You have to go get them sometimes. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2 is the sequel to. You know what? Before I tell you this fact that will absolutely blow your mind, I want you to do me a solid. I want you to go to the fridge and I want you to get a nice cold drink. I want you to go to the breakfast nook and I want you to grab a nice snack. I want you to go to your happy place. Sit down in a comfortable, easy lounge chair and just absorb this mind-blowing fact that it's a sequel to Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. I know. How goddamn shocking. They just had a two at the end. What absolute insanity will this movie hold beyond that? Well, if you remember Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, it was a horror film with Winnie the Pooh, Piglet, stalking a few people around a particular abode. And yeah, basically Christopher Robin abandoned his friends. And let's just say things didn't go all that well. And if you saw the first one, you remember that really outside of the storybook opening and the fact there were a few pretty girls in it and a couple halfway decent kills, it really wasn't nearly as fun as it should have been for a Winnie the Pooh inspired horror movie. You have characters like this and Peter Pan and others in the public domain. You have the mouse trap, you know, with Steamboat Willie, you have all this stuff, you know, you have a Pinocchio-inspired horror movie, not the Pinocchio horror movie that came out in the 90s. Yes, there was actually one. This is the Pooh-verse. They're making a whole bunch of, you know, horror movies about your favorite characters, Bambi and others. And look, there are elements of fun that can be had in those because, again, you're taking classic children characters and giving them a horror spin. The problem is Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey was not nearly as fun as it should have been and ended up being kind of a slog. Now, I ended up having a little bit of fun with it, a mild amount, but in all honesty, a lot of it was really hard to get through. And I admit, it was cheap, it was stupid, outside of the couple positives, it really wasn't very good. Yet somehow, was not my worst movie of the year last year. I'm not saying this is going to be, but... Instead of the $100,000 to $150,000 budget that they had for that, they had a million dollars for this particular movie. And yes, there are mild improvements to the production values outside of some questionable camera work and some even more questionable acting and some even more questionable editing. And the fact that, yes, a million dollars doesn't go nearly as far as it would have, say, back in the 80s, the 70s, or maybe even the 90s. And you have to pick and choose what you do. But when you don't really have anybody of note, any big name actors in this, I mean, you have people that have been in other projects, you could lean into the fun, or you could do what they did in this and kind of go the Terrifier 2 route, where we're just going to torture people for no goddamn reason. Now, I like this more than Terrifier 2. I like this more than Mousetrap, but that's not saying much. So, Reese Frake Waterfield, who did the first one, <coughs> and is doing the upcoming Peter Pan horror movie and has done some various horror schlock. He helped write and direct this and also was written by Matt Leslie. No, that is not another gimmick of Ed Leslie. And if you get that, I love you guys. He did Summer of 84 and has been part of the additional crew for other people. So, Scott Chambers was a producer on this and he also plays Christopher Robin. He also apparently was a producer on the first one. So, he's Christopher Robin. If you don't know the story of Pooh, basically you have Christopher Robin in the Hundred Acre Woods along with Pooh, Piglet, uh, Eeyore, Tigger, Mr. Owl, that kind of stuff, or Owl. I just keep calling him Mr. Owl because I keep thinking of the Tootsie Pop deal. And he is not, he's kind of going through it because after the events of the first movie, he kind of became a pariah. <coughs> and even though he's trying to make the most of his particular, of his life, his parents are being targeted by hazing because nobody believes him that there are animals in the woods uh, causing these killings, these murders. And from there, basically, we have Christopher Robin trying to come to grips with his past, protect his family. And, oh yes, also Pooh Piglet, who died in the first one, but somehow is back. I believe Piglet died in the first one. But that being said, you now have Tigger, no Hulk, I said Tigger. And you have, um, you have Al and, and his most Jeepers Creepers like so, thankfully without Victor Salva involved. And, yeah, there are a couple halfway decent moments, at least initially. I like the storybook opening, and the fact this movie made $7.5 million worldwide is further proof that it is going to end up getting, you know, just more expansions. But, yeah, I'm going to be honest, this movie's really bad. Really, really bad. I'm not even going to mix words here. This is pretty goddamn atrocious. There are points in this movie where I'm like, I know what they were trying to do, but they should have added uh, more of an element of fun. I'm not saying be mean-spirited just for the sake of it, because I felt that's what Terrifier 2 was. I don't feel Terrifier 2 was actually a movie. It was just stretch-out torture porn. But this, 
Yeah, you have a cool storybook opening. You have Christopher Robin dealing with the stuff and the fact that him and Pooh are basically, you know, unwanted by their, ver by, you know, various parts of society. The problem is, we start off in an RV scene where, yeah, Pooh and crew, the DK Pooh crew, end up torturing a few people, and that would have been fine, except, yeah, you don't really need a lot of character when you have a Winnie the Pooh horror movie, but again, you need to add more fun to it, and that's not what this did. And I, Owl, I think, actually had the best lines of this whole goddamn thing, because at least he seemed to be leaning into more of the goofy stuff. But it follows the usual earmarks of a slasher, but then forgets it's a goddamn slasher. There's just enough to remind you that, oh yeah, this is a Winnie the Pooh horror movie. But then there are points where I'm like, okay, I don't care about this backstory. And yeah, the twist they came up with was a lot dumber than anything I could have come up with. And I can come up with some dumbass uh, horror twists. It just, this is really bad. It is, again, not the worst thing I've seen this year. Not even close. I've seen horror movies that are way worse than this. But Jesus, tap dancing, Christ, me, oh my, down in the honey bayou, this is really bad. So, <clears throat> horrible CGI, by the way. Again, you work with the budgetary constraints, but maybe don't do certain shit if you can't make it look halfway good. Um... Owl kind of talked like a king's advisor, like he was advising the king on, like, invading a particular, like, you know, area and everything. We must go over here. We must take the fight to them. Um, then Tigger's in a prison cell, and we don't really actually see Tigger till like, much till like, the last 20 or so minutes. Which might have been fine if we were given a reason to care, and we're not given a reason to care about Christopher Robin. Not that we were given a reason to care about much of the characters in the first one, but at least... Amber uh, Doig Thorne, who I think has a rather fetching look and I think has potential to break out in horror and other movies, at least there were, you know, elements of them trying at first. Yes, there are more elements of them trying here, but in trying to add a backstory, it actually makes it more ridiculous and more stupid to where, can it just be that we have, you know, people that we have Obviously, people in horror costumes, but can't it just be that we just have a ridiculous thing of Pooh and his crew killing people? No, we have to add a stupid backstory to it that adds no emotional depth at all. Uh, the acting is dog shit. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I'm not even saying the actors are terrible, but this is terrible dialogue. Terrible direction. The Even the horror isn't earned. The violence isn't earned. It's like stuff like, oh, oh, look, oh, there's blood splattering and all that and everything. It's on Peacock if you want to check it out. It doesn't really work. It doesn't work really on any level. It's, again, a moss improvement over the first one. But, yeah, that's not really saying much. More of these coming up. Three, two, one, and spoilers. So, yeah. They rip apart the girls who are doing an RV sale. Um, <coughs> Al points out when this woman uh, burns but then gets out of the water. How dare you try to survive? Um... There's a character, um, you know, Bunny, who's a sister. Well, that's her nickname. And, yeah, Christopher Robin lives with his parents. Um, Al is ch telling, you know, Pooh, we need to take the fight to them, otherwise we will starve. And, yeah, they just... It, I'm sorry. It, basically, Christopher Robin saw his brother Billy, don't be a hero, being taken away. And so it's haunted him. He's done therapy sessions to try and come to grips with this stuff. Kind of like how Five Nights at Freddy's did it, except I will take this over Five Nights at Freddy's because, yeah, I'm sorry, that movie was really dog shit. I'm not saying this is better, but I will rewatch this before Five Nights at Freddy's. So, this is the funniest thing, though. Christopher Robin is a doctor. Now, there is a line in this, a line in this where, after he gives a kid a spiral ta a spinal tap, spiral tap, yeah, he just AJ style TNA'd him. Um, his boss doctor says to him, with all the stuff that's happened and the horror film that's come out, you know, they, they, they don't want to have you in the hospital. So yeah, they're basically just making it where, yes, it's obvious that these events happen in a, you know, in the previous movie and they're carrying over to this. But no, we see actual clips of the other movie of the previous movie, in this. And there is a line, and I am not kidding, where Winnie the Pooh 
does a line, you know, and it's like, you know, he's got lightning around him. It's pooing time. That's an actual line that some motherfucker got paid to write. Hollywood is doomed. Again, you could have some fun with it, but none of it was earned before you started doing that. You were treating it too seriously with Wendy the Pooh breaking apart, you know, this woman and then killing her in a bear trap. Uh, and the, the attempt to add a backstory just doesn't work. I'm sorry, it just doesn't. They made this part of the story. They made a part of the story, and it's just now it's not, it's goofy for the wrong reasons. Tigger is loose. Um, the cops, it, it, while they go into the the tree, and he's loose suddenly and says, "Fuck it, let's bounce." Like that's my line. That's actually so. Why did they turn like Tigger into like you know a bad Ving Rhames uh, like impersonator? Because I could see Ving Rhames playing this in a big budget movie because. I think Van Grimes could play pretty much anything. I mean, it would be almost insane to see him in Tigger makeup, but nevertheless. So, there's a guy named Arthur Gallup, um, who did genetic science, uh, science experiments. And <clears throat> there's also this rave going on that's going to factor into a third act of this movie. And an owl kills some guy named Finn, not Finn Balor, says, you know, there is, oh God, there is no God in this atrocious town. <coughs> Billy was his brother. And it turns out that, um, you know, Billy was taken by this guy that Christopher Robin happened to see at this particular hospital while his friend Aaron had his face torn apart. And it actually kind of looked like they took shredded ham, like sliced ham and put it on his face. I mean, they might have, you know, whatever. It's just, it's fine. It's, it's fine. But he confronts this guy who kidnapped kids for Gallup and Gallup was doing experiments cross pollinating human DNA and animal DNA. Yep. Pooh and his friends were kids that were turned into genetic experiments. Now, I probably wouldn't have minded this so much, but they treated it so goddamn seriously, instead of, again, leaning into the, the goofy factor of it. Billy is Pooh. And that is why Pooh has such an attachment to Christopher Robin. Sure. Why not? That's really fucking stupid, but whatever, it's fine. Um, so, yeah, basically, these genetic experiments have, like, you know, they, they've lost their humanity. I don't recall any of this shit being referenced in the first one, but whatever. Cool. And, yeah, Tigger then shows up with 15 minutes left, if that. Um, they, he attacks people at this rave, so does, um... I think Piglet gets killed early on in this, which is kind of funny. And yeah, then uh, he kills people. People get killed. I don't really, I don't really care. Christopher Robin is looking for his sister, and he says, "Come here, you fluorescent bitch." Was an actual line that Tigger said because she was dressed up. And who got paid to write this stuff? Are you guys motherfucking idiots? I mean, seriously, I'm asking this. Are they motherfucking idiots? Because again, like leaning into the fun aspect means you at least need to understand what comedy and horror is. They don't understand what any of it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, people like me will watch this stuff. And I can appreciate what they were trying to do while also recognizing that the movie's complete dog shit. But Tigger <clears throat> ends up killing basically everybody. Christopher Robin shoots him at one point. So I guess he's okay. But then Pooh shows up and ends up chopping through a car and his chainsaw ends up catching on fire. Sure. But then there's Lexi, who is played by Tolua Evans, I believe is her name, if I mispronounce it. I apologize. She was trying to be the, her the, the best friend heroine. I think this movie could have used some heroin. Don't do drugs, kids. Don't do drugs. Even if this movie seemed like it was on drugs. And then... He's trying to reason with Billy, and then Billy nearly kills Lexi to Lou Evans. And then um, he swings an axe, and we hear the only, like, funny part of the movie. Pooh say, oh, bother, and then he gets axe in the face. And if the movie had been more of that shit, I would have been okay with it. But, yeah, the sister is alive. This ending song, whoever came up with that ending song, stop. Find something else to do with your life. Good God. 
But then Al says, oh, our strength is in our friendship, and he dips into the honey. Remember the honey that could burn, but could also, like, restore life, I, I guess? Yeah. Oh, and then the credits show, like, a Pinocchio thing and various other horror-inspired stuff that we're going to be getting in the U in the Pooh-verse. Hooray. Hooray. And I'll probably be reviewing it all because you, cause, cause you people want me to review it. I try to have fun with movies, even if they're bad, but god damn, this was a slog. F, it gets an F, I'm sorry, it's really bad. Again, modest improvement over the first, but it didn't really have anywhere to go but up. Agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ripplin, I'll see you soon.